Hey there, flying around in the A4 today. Messed with this a little bit last night and actually had a bunch of fun, so thought maybe uh, we were going to fly as a group with the A4. A lot of people aren't very familiar with it, so thought maybe I could do kind of a little introduction video and show you guys a little a couple of tips and tricks. Uh, by no means do I know any, everything about it, but enough to get us started anyway. So, this is the default loadout for this map. It's got Shrikes, an air ground missile. Anti-radiation, like the predecessor to the arm. On the outside, got early sidewinders. Uh, I think they're the 9P5, aim 9P5 on the middle wing column there. And I've got the uh, Mark 82 Snake Eyes there with the fin the, uh, uh, So before we taxi here, let's take a look at some of the controls that I use. Flap handle, I usually use down, L stop. So, what that one will do is the flaps should come down while you're holding the button. And then put the flaps up, I just put them all the way up. And then, obviously, we've got our, you know, landing gear up, down, default G, speed brake, default B, that's a toggle. Uh, I'll go over other ones as we get to it. A lot of them, it's nice about this mod is a bunch of the stuff is clickable. So. so here you can see the flaps indicator. So like I said, I press and hold. And I can stop wherever I want. You know, press and hold a little bit more. Press and hold a little bit more. I, I like that it's uh, kind of analog. I can put the flaps wherever I want. I'll put them about half there. And uh, here's my altimeter. So I'm going to zero that out. Here's an indicator that says my speed brake's open. So brake button to close that. Here's your uh, gear indicator and you can see the picture of the wheels. So over here we've got our tack hand. Operates the same way as like the F14. You just click this knob here for the second digit. And over here for the first digit. Over here you go transmit receive. And over here you flip this switch to the center. That tack hand needle now this tack in is right here. Actually, right in front of me is the tack in station. So it's telling us direction and miles zero. So I found that it's a little bit off. I don't know. I haven't really messed with a whole lot. Obviously, you got your vertical speed gauge, altimeter, speed. You got knots on the inside and a mock there on the outside. Your primary compass, kind of uh, your artificial horizon. This is the radar, which I know nothing about. Here you've got a clock and a backup compass. Uh, your radio dial, you can change your frequencies. Here, obviously your throttle. Oh, is there something else I do that's pretty neat? I forget. I'll have to come back to it. <clears throat> as far as weapon systems go, here's your master arm switch. Here's like your rotary dial to pick whether you're using rockets. Uh, I think I believe GM's ground missile. So that would be unarmed. Not sure how that's different than off. Uh, again, I don't know what a lot of these are. Usually, I just use bombs and ground missile arm. And then guns ready or not. That's for your cannon. There's your fusing switch, whether tail off or nose tail. <clears throat> and then these are basically your uh, pylon selector switches. So if you want to drop bombs, that's on our middle pylon. So it'll be station three. Sidewinders would be on two and four. And we got shrikes on one and five. So the switch is off in the down position. All right. So we've got uh, flaps, gear, altimeter. Okay. Up here we've got our countermeasures. So again, I maybe not know the best way to do these things, but I found the way that works for me. You got your one and two, which is usually going to correspond to chaff and flare, depending on how you load up. I'm not sure you can actually change that. I'm not sure which one's which, to be honest with you. But I always do both, so it doesn't matter. But I turn power on, and now this is a salvo switch. Where if you if you're going to hotkey it, I hotkey this button. It says 
shaft auto push button ALE 29A salvo. Now when you push that button, it's going to salvo, so it continually pops chaff and flare about every three seconds until you hit power off. So then as soon as when you turn it off, turn it back on, and it'll be, that way it's set up next time you need to do chaff and flare. Like I said, maybe not the best way to do it, but that's how I do it. Over here, this is our, uh, our ECM and RWR, basically. I don't know if the jammer is actually functional, but I go ahead and flip it on, put it on, repeat. Uh, down here is our uh, RWR. So flip, flip the APR25 up and you start to hear that hum. Now it's just your standard hum. So take this PRF volume and turn it down until you can barely hear it. It's just barely noticeable. Now that'll get a lot higher pitched. There's two different higher pitches for when you're getting, you know, a pegged by a search radar, and then it goes even higher when there's an actual missile. So I turn the missile alert volume up. Alright. Alright, so we're going to get taxied out here. Start adding the power in as I tap the brakes to get this thing lined up. Differential braking's always been hard for me. There we go. Get up some speed now. We can use a rudder. More precise. I don't even try pulling to like 150 knots. This thing, uh, I guess we're pretty well loaded too. It's a little bouncy, start applying gentle pre back pressure on the stick. Alright, wheels up, flaps up. Let's uh, roll right out of here for gain some altitude. Let's start with some bombing. <coughs> so, again, we're going to switch this. Uh, Nose tail fusing, center pylon. Let me get this thing trimmed out before I go heads down and get myself into some trouble. Okay, ready, ready, ready. All right, we should be good. So we're gonna head over this way <clears throat> to that line of tanks. See if we can roll in for some low-level bombing. People who know more than I do maybe know how to use some idea of what this bombing reticle is, and speed, and flight profiles. I just aiming by seat of the pants feel, so. A little bit easier with the high drag bombs than the free fall bombs, just because you've got, uh, you're dropping from lower altitudes, a little easier to be accurate. Let's see what I can come up with here. Tanks are shooting at me here. Let's see how come in low and fast. Here, like I said, SA-3 is at Anapa here, and you can see the threat ring of it. So, 301 for 27 miles, and I don't have any idea what the... Getting an RWR indication here for a SAM. Oh, actually, where that would be. So, over there, this is just a SA-6, which I've already... Oh, you know what? Maybe this map's been restarted. Okay, yeah, it appears it has. This is not the same map I was on the other day. So let's go turn at this SA-6. Let's see, our strikes again are on our wingtips. So we'll turn. Now you can hear the different hum then when I turn that on. Almost like a sidewinder tone. Find a heading here. Zero, five, zero. visually acquire, I think the Sam's near an airfield, oh, 
track radar still on. Track radar. Now they got me first, but at least we're learning the principle there. <laughs> Do the same thing, just don't get shot down. Should be visible soon. There they are. Splash this first one quick with us. It. We're going to turn our shaft flare off, back on, try to acquire that bandit again. Slam site up there, but we've got bombs to get rid of. Since I'm flying back, and there with bombs still on. It's just a training mission here. Where survival's not necessarily a priority. Two five four. It's mostly here on the south end. I'm not sure. That little hill helped us. Boom, 
track radar destroyed. How about that? Feet wet, follow the coast home. 